Okay, so hi and welcome uh, to my stream. Uh, I'm going, going to continue what I was doing last time, if you've watched that. Uh, I recently discovered a project called GitUI, which is a terminal UI Git client. It's very much in its infancy, but I have high hopes of where it might go. And I want to start to try and using, as, using it as my daily driver, but my main uh, <clears throat> roadblock towards that from at the moment is that I need support for multi-line multi -line commit messages, which are not yet implemented. Uh, there is an issue for that. Uh, I didn't look find that issue. It's part of a uh, of an issue with uh, concerning improving the commit uh, message work uh, commit message flow in general. But I want to add support for opening the uh, opening an editor and committing your or entering your commit message there, much the way Git does natively. So I am going to try to make some more progress. So what I've got so far is, uh, we do just, oh, why is my keyboard not typing C? Hmm. That is interesting. Okay, there we go. I huh, don't know what that was. Uh, cargo run. Yes. Okay, so here we are inside of the GitUI client. So you have the unstage changes, you have stage changes over here. Um, you can stage stuff by hitting enter, like this. You have some uh, logs, stashing, stashes, everything. So that's good. And what we want to make better is, at the moment we have the regular commit message. You can type and, oh, that's, <laughs> I committed by accident. Uh, let's see, mm, let's just revert this. Yes, this one, but we wanted to make it back. Or rather, we can just do this, I think. So, there we go. I guess we'll just... No, that doesn't work. Okay, we want it back to how it was here. So let's do this, yeah. There we go. Okay, now we're back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so let's just move that over again. And this is the current um, commit message window. And what we want to, what, what I've already added support for is hitting, instead of hitting C to open the regular window, you can hit Shift C and it'll open your default editor. And you can enter a some kind of message here, and if it's not empty, it will be committed. And if it is empty, it will uh, not be committed. And the problem so far is that when I'm inside the editor, huh? Okay, this is interesting. Yeah, okay, now it's back again. Okay, so I have to hit the every button twice to make it register, which I thought was, had something to do with both, maybe both Vim and and the um, Git UI trying to listen to events, but it seems it kind of works sometimes. Because that works. Uh, it works some of the time. Oh, I. This is really weird. Okay. Anyway, if we remove this and exit out, and this is the second problem. Um, <laughs> uh, it doesn't re-render really the whole background, so we get this kind of weird look where you get the background bleeding through. Uh, to the foreground, you don't see it as clearly now. You can see that there's this took. 12 hours, 33 minutes thing, that's part of my prompt. And that shouldn't be there. So if I if I quit 
good UI. You can, uh, or you can actually see it on screen anymore. It's been cleared out. Bit of a do cargo run again. This is how it should look. So something is awry. So first things first, I think the fix for uh, the background thing is to re-render, or rather, uh, let's see if we add this stage changes, jump into Vim, and then just jump back, right back out again. Yeah, so it doesn't render, you see, because here's the cargo run and running and all that. And then all of a sudden from here, approximately, it starts rendering the right thing. And of course at the bottom. But then when I start navigating, everything jumps back because I'm guessing that it re-renders those parts and, <laughs> and that fixes it. You can see there's a zero here that doesn't go away because it's always in the there's always a space there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm not really sure. Hmm. Not really sure how to do this a better way then. It apparently breaks when you navigate away and come back. Might the solution be maybe to somehow re-render the whole screen. Kind of feels like that might be the route to go. Uh, let's see, how do we do that though? That can't be... Hmm. So there's always this draw method. Terminal.draw. App.draw. Okay, so the app. Should probably call something of this kind. <clears throat> to make it redraw the whole thing. Uh, let's see, where is this used? Um, oh, it's option. Hmm. Twice in main, apparently. If needs redraw. Oh, that sounds very promising. Let's see where this is. Inside the loop. This might very well be the main loop of the, yep, seems like it. It captures the events, it appears. Scope time. <laughs> Macros are sometimes pretty funny in uh, Rust. If needs redraw. Let me these redraw true. If the event is input event, tick. So it seems that the only time 
that it doesn't need a redraw is when doing the spinner. I'm not really sure what that means, but hmm, that doesn't help me much. Because this still hasn't updated properly. Will it update properly if I have some input event? So if we do this, go back. Hmm, doesn't appear so. What was this other reference? Just a few lines. Yeah, so that's just the first draw call, I'm guessing. Yeah. Hmm. Q event tick. Okay, and then there's a get event. Hmm. Okay, this draw function. Okay, so it's, hmm. Might it be accessible if I go through, hum, 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 hum. Okay, let's see. I might be able to, if we Okay, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> I've forgotten where I put this. Why have I used it twice? Okay, first is a using. Okay, that make, kind of makes sense. And then as bytes, right. So show editor, yes. Um, so here are some notes that I made last time for what to do. So first we create a temporary file to write to and edit in the editor. Then we launch the editor. We use the um, git editor uh, environment variable first because that's what git prefers. Then visual, then editor. I believe this is the same uh, preference chain that git will use by default. So we just reuse that. that makes sense. Um, and yeah, this is just a comment. Um, I, I explained that we, in some cases we need we need to support, we need to split up whatever they've entered into the environment variable, because in the case of Vim, you can just do Vim and then a file path right here. So I don't know, some kind of file path, uh, my file, and that will work. But for visual editors like code, for example, or sublime text, you often need to pass dash dash wait for it to uh, block the thread until the uh, UI has exited. So in that case, we need to pass this as the as the command or to run, and these are the arguments to the command. So we do some splitting in and and, and yeah, to make all that work, we split the string and everything. And after uh, we run the command, 
After that, we read the file and we clear the comments because uh, any file starting with a hash will uh, be regarded comment and will not be included. We read the commit message that are left and if there is no commit message, we will not commit. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, and then we just pass the commit message to the commit function, which is just down here. Uh, I should probably just, just for, um, like so, the commit message function. Because the commit uh, commit function already exists, and I didn't want to change that. I didn't want to refactor all the other code to use uh, use some other name for its commit message uh, commit function. So I just um, changed this to call commit message internally. Uh, so all existing code can still use this. And if you want to submit the commit message directly, you can do that. And this one reads the commit message from the input. Uh, so this is. This would be the um, this would be this window, so this is the input. So it reads this commit message, but I want to pass in my own message that I've read from the file. So all that is working. Uh, it does abort when it should. It uh, it does abort when it should. It commits when it should. So all that's working fine. Uh, the only problem is, as I mentioned, that the editor is behaving strangely. And Git UI doesn't render properly when it uh, comes back, uh, or rather it returns to Git UI. So what I might do actually is try to run this with something like code or, or some kind of uh, visual editor, GUI ed editor, and see if that works as it should, and see if that breaks anything. Because then we're not reusing the same terminal window, and that might, for some reason, make things work. You know what? I'm actually going to... I'm just going to try this redraw thing first, and see if that works. So if I remember correctly, this is just draw. It's directly inside the the main file. So I might be able to just uh, right here. This waits for this command to return. Uh, no, right below. Can I just do create draw? Right. I need access to the terminal and app, which I do not have. I think. Uh, let's see. This instance. Which terminal is this? Okay. Yes, this is just a local variable of the main function. Right. And this is the app. Okay, so that's not going to work. Uh, so let's just delete that line. And we'll... I guess we'll change the, the one of the variables that it's looking for and see if we can get that working. So... Uh, let's just exit Git UI and then let's mm, yeah let's just make it a variable inside this prompt and we'll do visual visual it should be set to if we do like uh, so let's see guessing that we need to do this code dash dash wait like so this is showing me over it's quickly oh that's just cargo run Okay, let's see. If we now jump down here, do Shift S, 
Okay, that launches Go. Uh, well, code as it should, which is good. And this is a test commit message. I'm happy with that. I save. I quit. Okay, so that works just fine. <sighs> okay. We go through to fork, which is a GUI, Git UI, a Git GUI. We see that it works just as expected. Do the two files are committed? with the correct message okay so we've doubly confirmed that this is working just as it should the main problem is the i'm guessing hmm. Hmm. So the main problem here becomes the fact that we're reusing the same terminal thing. And I think that is messing up some of the, some of everything. Uh, I don't like it. Hmm. Okay, so let's uh, do set dash e uh, visual like so Car cargo run. And then if we just go back straight away, now we'll get this all messed up view. But now to see. Uh, no, it doesn't work at all. Oh, it looks like it committed. Did it do that? No, no. Oh, but it unstaged the changes, right? I did, I did see this last time too. I'm guessing that's the behavior of no. That can't be right because I never, I don't call this if, unless I have to. That's strange. Okay, so the next thing to try is. Um, if I do cargo cargo run with the dash L option passed into Git UI, it will start logging. Uh, let's just bring up the log. Now I'm going to do log over here. Uh, this log is located at uh, we do dash i get ui. Okay, uh, there we go. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, hmm. I maybe bad has some kind of dash f. Oh, that's. <laughs> Uh, is there like a follow command? No. Um, why is it bat? Bat. Right, so let's see. 
Let's add this file to staged. Let's do sweet, it's a shift C. Um, what's the, uh, is it? Isn't, doesn't this have like a, no, 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 it's called tail. That's the, that's the one I think I'm, I'm thinking of. That may actually have this. Nope. <laughs> it does not. I think it's just dash T. And then the file. No tags file. Okay, that's not the one. I can't for the life. Hey, Nomad. Um, uh, sorry about not reading the chat. I'm not too good at, uh, at monitoring it. I'm working on a... I'm trying to make a PR for a project called Git UI, which is a CLI interface for Git. And what I'm trying to make uh, Git working is editing the commit message in, in an external editor. And it's working at the moment for GUI editors, it seems, but not for uh, CLI editors. Like if you launch Vim or, I don't know, Emacs or something. No, no, it doesn't work properly. And I'm trying to get that working. Anyway, let's see. So it did register the shift C, that's good. So what I'm wondering now is, if I go back up here, try to enter something, enter, oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> uh, it's just registering half my keystrokes and it's really annoying. It kind of feels like the first keystroke is ca caught by GitUI for some reason, and then the second keystroke is passed on to Vim, or the other way around, maybe. Because E did, E was captured by Vim, but N was not. So maybe every second keystroke is captured by GitUI instead. Okay, at least that's my working of hypothesis, blah, 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 hypothesis at the moment. Uh, okay. Let's see what's in the log. Hmm. So it's claiming that it doesn't see any events, right? So I'm just gonna quit out of this. So let's see, where is the shift C? Interesting. Okay, so here's the, the shift C that up, um, opened the, uh, opened Vim, right? Then it does update request. Another request, request status fetched. Then the end character. E, S, E, G. Then Q, oh, didn't turn off uh, notifications. My bad. <laughs> hmm. S E 
yes, these are very much the key, the things that I typed. Because I wrote, I tried to write something, uh, enter something. So here's N, E. So the T was captured by Vim. Then the E. Then the R was captured by Vim. The space doesn't show up here. So that was probably captured by Vim. And then there's the S, O, M, E. I did a backspace, I remember that. And then a G, then the colon and Q to quit Vim. Yes, and the exclamation mark was passed right through the Vim, I remember. Okay, so I've I've confirmed my hypothesis, I think. So they're both trying to capture keystrokes. And it's Okay, that is not good. <clears throat> How do we fix that though? <laughs> right. Hmm. How do we fix that? So in theory, we should make Git UI stop listening to keystroke events. Let Vim handle all of them and then turn it back on again. So if we add some comms here. Um, stop listening to keystroke events and then start listening the key come on. come on stroke events really I can't type for okay maybe I can get this working how though? Mm -mm -mm -mm. There must be somewhere here in Maine that starts listening to these events. This is an input event, which is a kind of event which is represents an event from cross term, right? So the input events are okay. So we have a look where this is used, right? Okay, this is a loop. So it spawns a background thread, right? Start polling thread. Right, 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 right. Okay. Then it starts looping. Then it stops wait uh, stops and waits for input events. And then it sends those. Hmm. And then it just runs this poll in the background. <clears throat> Basically forever. Or rather, until the Git UI thread um, exits, which will pull this with it. So 
it does the poll. Event poll. Is available, otherwise it returns false. Max poll is two seconds, min poll is five milliseconds. We use the timeout here, right? Because that's how it batches them, right? Hmm. Every two seconds, that might actually, so if it's empty, wait for two seconds before, oh right, that might actually explain why it's kind of inconsistent when it captures the, the, um, <clears throat> does this return? Nothing. If it should panic, we'll probably have a circle builder. Uh, Of a task into rent thread pool in the static or global scope, just like a center thread, this task is not tied to the current stack frame, hence it cannot hold any references other than those with static lifetime. Use the scope function to create a scope. This one can hold reference to the present stack frame. Who's almost certainly want to use a move closure as their arguments, otherwise the closure would typically hold references. Blah, 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 right? Hmm. This returns a receiver, right? Rx rates over here. In FRS there is the event method that consumes the event. Maybe you can choose the event consumption logic to get it to behave. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, oh, hello, hitchhikers, by the way. <laughs> Um, I don't think that will help me because I think the problem is that this function right here um, is trying to pull uh, to, to wait for events from cross term the underlying terminal uh, abstraction and I think this I think this is a problem that it tries because this is running in a background thread uh, in the in the rayon thread pool. And I think the problem is that this is running simultaneously as the as Vim does. And that's what's creating the problem. And I'm not really sure how to prevent this from happening. Uh, 
I think one one solution could be to make this stop running and then restart it once once I'm out because this this actually has a this, ah right but this this returns to receiver so that's no good that would break the whole thing no okay so what I'm thinking is I should probably just use like an if inside of here which will uh, check if it should try to pull or not. So if the batch is empty, it will use the max poll duration, which just means that it will wait for two seconds, I'm guessing, before aborting, because it's passed into here. Yeah, I'm not really sure how to actually forward the keystrokes to the to the right process because I'm spawning the <clears throat> I'm spawning the process with the command uh, command <laughs> with, with the built-in command here and when this is running uh, it is both the the if this if this launches vim for example if editor is set to vim and this launches vim both Vim and Git UI will try to capture the keystrokes. But if I launch code with this uh, variable uh, or this stored in the editor environment variable, it will work just fine. And my guess is it, that's because I'm not using the terminal. So my guess is I should probably stop this from doing um, from doing anything, from doing any polling, once I'm inside of um, Vim. And I'm thinking I might just do this. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's just copy this, actually. Just as a proof of concept, I'm thinking. Uh, this is one. Oh, so that's apparently... The new function is now preferred. Oh, right. Huh. Since one... 34. Okay, okay. Uh, so I guess we can just make this... Atomic use size new. And this should be the <clears throat> initial value, I'm guessing then. Let's just make it zero, I guess. Uh, like so. And then continue stealing this code <laughs> from the example and basically uh, or rather uh, let's do um, this first okay so let, let's just rename this first of all this should be like um, mm, I don't know. Should do poll. Blah. That's a bad name. We'll use it. I'm all about bad names. <clears throat> And then we change this to should to poll, like so. And this shouldn't be a fetch ad. Um, I haven't actually used atomic use size before, so <laughs> I'm just kind of uh, trying my way here and see if uh, I can get working. Mm -mm. Fetch. Pull. Oh. 
So I'm guessing this adds one or, or adds a whatever value and max min and and or sub update. I just want to read the value. Read V. Should probably just look this up on. <clears throat> Adds the current value returning the previous value. Yes, does a fetch and add. Okay. What does this fetch and bitwise and with the current? Okay. Atomic use eyes. New get mute. Returns mutable reference to the underlying integer. That's not what I want. Into inner. Load. Loads a value from the atomic integer. Takes an ordering argument which describes the memory ordering of this operation. Possibly in seek. and relaxed so tell me you says new five load and that should be five okay that looks like what I want so if we do load and a we need the ordering I'll just use the same one as used in the example I don't really know what I'm <laughs> um, too much about this, so uh, rather that will return an integer, and let's say if it's uh, if that e equals zero. Yeah, so modulo two, so every other that equals zero. Uh, do this, I guess. And then inside here, we'll do this. Uh, so this should probably be, uh, this was inside poll. Where is that? That's in the top part. So create poll. Should do poll. I'm guessing there's like a, stores a value into the atomic integer. I basically just want to do an increment. I think this is the <clears throat> the right way to do it. Doesn't look like it has something that's just called add. There's load, new store, and swap. Ah, sure. Fetch and add. Add one. Uh, yes, I need the ordering. That's from standard sync atomic ordering. And then we'll just do the same right here. Yeah. Let's see how that works out. Let's just uh, get out of this. Do another cargo run. Woohoo! It actually works. Excellent. Oh, that was really good. Okay. 
<laughs> Great success. Oh, that is so good. Okay. I'm really happy with that. <laughs> okay, so this doesn't work yet, but... This seems to also to be working just fine right now. Oh, that is so good. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. So that does work. <laughs> um, however, there are probably better ways to do this <laughs> than just doing like a atomic use size. But that was... And... Um, This loop is just going to run infinitely fast now. Should it maybe pause for a second every now and then, maybe? <laughs> Great success indeed. Um, let's... Um, Do this properly. Let's add that in there for now. Could maybe do like a, a function that toggles it maybe? I don't know. Or maybe we could pause it somehow. Hmm. Okay, so I got that working. Now my main problem is that the UI is getting all borked when I return from them. My, I'm, I'm just coming back to the fact that I kind of want to re-render everything from scratch. But, and it looks like this should do that. But it looks like this is too smart, to be honest. Because it says needs, re needs draw is true. And it's only set to false if the event is a spinner update. What is the spinner? And what does update do? Increment spinner graphic by one. Draws or moves spinner character to on pending state. Okay, I'm not really sure what this refers to. I haven't seen this, I think. Anyway, it doesn't look like it's relevant for what I'm doing now. So, needs draw is such a true. And for input event, for example, it still should be true. So it hits this, and it does the draw thing, which draws the UI. Terminal draw, draw the app. And as far as I can see, if we go into the log, it doesn't log the error, fail to draw. No, failed. No, so it doesn't it doesn't log that at all. So it looks like the draw function is working as it should, but it's not updating correctly here. And mm, it almost feels like there should be a way to force a complete redraw of the UI. And I think there might be a way because instead of commit there is a draw function too. Somewhere. Yeah, here we go. And if I remember correctly, center direct, yes. Render widget clear. This is the one, I think. Okay, we'll look at this one. Uh, the text, text is a bit small, but it says a widget to clear reset a certain area to allow overdrawing, e.g. for pop-ups. So my thinking is 
maybe this is what I want. Because it says if you render this, it should clear or reset the area. So that kind of feels like if I do this, if I have like a toggle to enable this in the global draw function, then if I do this clear first, it should redraw everything. Okay, so have a look, let's have a look at the app draw, which actually does the drawing. Macro because of generic draw call. Okay. Self draw pop ups. Yeah, so this draws everything. Command bar draw. Self dot tab. Hmm, draw tabs, draw, command bar. So this sets up the whole thing. Fresh width. F dot size. Maybe how was it done here? Oh, this is in the text input. Yeah. So what's F? F is the frame. Render widget clear inside this area. Render widget. All clear inside of F size. Um, This is from two way, I think. Two way, which is clear. Right. Um, have we anything imported? Two way widgets. Let's just add a clear. Oh, Okay, so this is gonna force a redraw of everything, I think, on every draw. So it's very suboptimal, but if I have this correct, it should fix the rendering issue when returning from Vim. And if that's the case, Uh oh. Why didn't it type the Q at once? Hmm. Not my big glitch. Yeah, so that didn't work. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> So where is this used? Refresh with. Right, so then it splits the, okay, okay. Draw pop-ups, it returns okay. Oh, that's super annoying. All these are called rectangles, uh, except this one. <laughs> this one is called area. <laughs> why, why is that the case, though? Hey, it's called area instead of rect. Yeah, whatever. Um, hmm.
This should clear the whole thing, right? Okay, very pretty certain that's what it's supposed to do. Hmm, but that didn't work. Let's just make sure that we're actually... Uh, let's see. Um, doing at level draw. Let's see. Right. So let's have a look in the log. Yeah, no, it's rendering all the time, as it should do. So that looks good. Looks fine. Doing Apple will draw all the time. Yep. Hmm. So that's strange. So it's not clearing out as I hope it would. Hmm. Is there maybe like a function to reset or something? No. This is a frame though, which comes from TUI where B is backend. And I know backend to be a generic or rather like in um, an abstraction of the underlying backend, which in this case is cross term. It's a constant term interface for rendering. Let's have a look at this and see size widget, render widget, and render stateful widget. Right. Ta. Uh, yeah. This isn't too interesting. I think. Let's have a look at clear. For a more complete example, how to use like utilize clear to realize pop ups. See examples pop ups. Okay. This will clear or reset the area first. This looks so much like what I wanted to do, but it doesn't do what I wanted to do still. <laughs> right, because <clears throat> it basically says clear out an area of the of the screen and just make it black to be able to render on top of it afterwards. But it should do that for all of this, but it doesn't. And that annoys me. It feels like it should be doing that, but it doesn't. Hmm. Maybe. Um, Cross term. Uh, this one, yeah. Does it have like a clear, clear type? Command that clears the terminal screen buffer.
See the clear type enum. <clears throat> Different ways to clear the terminal buffer. Yeah, that makes sense. All cells, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this, this kind of does what I want it to do, I think. Once again. <laughs> uh, Can I maybe just do that instead of here? Oh, that's that's um, that's dirty. <laughs> so like, can I just do like cross term terminal? Clear. Uh -huh. I don't know. Clear type. All. Yeah, let's try that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, checkers. I didn't see your uh, message for now. For now. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. There we go. Ooh. It didn't pick up. Oh, right. Hmm. That's interesting. The polling thing, if it's already waiting for two seconds, it might actually interfere with... You might actually end up being inside of that two seconds before it picks up that it shouldn't... that it should stop listening. Yeah. Hmm. We'll have to look into that too. Uh, let's see, in the poll thing. Um, if, um, if it's all oh, already polling with a uh, two second timeout it will consume events doesn't work start working immediately if it's currently polling with a two second timeout duration yeah it's not my best writing but yeah it works okay so let's see no, it didn't clear it correctly. Blah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Clear type. Yeah. Hmm. 
Ah, that's so annoying. <laughs> it kind of feels like the... <clears throat> The standard out execute part. Oh, right. Um, you're thinking of here, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm using status instead, uh, where it executes the command as a child process, waiting for it to finish and collecting its exit status. Um, so I don't, I don't uh, um, use the standard out um, part, of, uh, st standard out output at all. Output at all. Output, output, no. output at all, yeah. Um, do you think, are you saying that you might think that the output thing might, sure, why, why not, let's just try that. Um, System executes command as a child process, waiting for it to finish and collecting all of its output. By default, so and an error are captured and used as a result. But this this is the configuration standard. Right. This uses a spawn though, in the example. What does spawn do? Returning a handle to it, yeah. Or inherit from the parent. Right. So what I can do in theory is if I do standard out, and if I set this to STD process null, and then do status, question mark. Should probably do one for error too, but Warning, output is not a terminal. Right. That makes sense. That is true. <laughs> I'm assuming this just writes to dev null or some so yeah, so dev null. <clears throat> That claims to clear the whole thing, but it doesn't look like it did that. That's freaking annoying. Okay, let's uh, try to move this ugh, instead of here. Let's see how that works out. Uh, no, no, um. Oh, crap. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, yeah, so this is not good. Okay, this... Yeah, so this is locked up. Um, <laughs> um, uh, let's see, what does that run? Cargo? Apparently not. Uh, how about um, Git UI? Kill uh, three, four, four, eight. Oh no, this is completely right. Um, so, uh, I should probably. Um, <laughs> uh, Tmux uh, kill window, I think. Terminate window. Yeah, but I don't want to necessarily bind it. Uh, yeah, just kill window. So I'm guessing it's probably something, uh, not like kill dash window target zero, I think. Yeah, that seems to work. Right. Uh, Hey, yeah, that didn't work either. <laughs> ah, so good. Right. Ah, it's so close to working, but I'm kind of stumped here with what to do. It's so strange to me, though. It, it doesn't seem to be working just doing like a clear of the terminal either, which is weird because I thought that would be exactly what I want to do. 
But all this is just redrawing the redrawing the parts that is actually updating. How does it do the complete draw the first time then? Because that just seems like uh, let's see. Um, it's inside main. does this initial draw and that paints the whole thing and then it seems to just be doing incremental updates but why is it <laughs> why is it not doing that at any later s at any later point I'm wondering I'm really wondering what this is. Scope time. Huh. Simple macro to insert a scope based runtime measure that logs the result. Okay. the final funny with the exclamation mark. Scoop time! Needs draw equals false. That is an error. Needs draw. Then it draws everything. does it incrementally so even though I clear the thing it does not care Let's try this, calling the uh, the clear, rendering the clear widget at the top level above anything else. Yeah. Still not working though. Hmm. This too is so strange to me. Why does it not clear everything if it that if that's what it claims to do? Hmm. Is it because it doesn't Fresh width, right? Hmm.
Hmm. Hmm, I'm just really stumped here. Uh, I'm not really sure how to get this working. Uh, all my attempts to clear everything and re-render everything from scratch seems to be not working. Uh, it claims that some of these commands should clear everything, but it doesn't seem to be doing what I wanted to do. It just re-renders. <sighs> so frustrating. So all this is coming from TUI. So if we have a look at this. Allow overdrawing, right? That might not be what we want. Can I just do like a... Clears the entire screen. That's specifically for the Termion. Player on the back end trait. Okay, this is interesting. This apparently has some documentation. Clear the entire screen and move the cursor to the top left of the screen. Does this have the, no. Okay, so this seemed to be, ha seemed to have clear and also flush. And I'm assuming that this is just flush the Everything from the buffer. Okay. Interesting. Let's see. I have the terminal accessible right here. Could I perhaps do terminal dot clear? I have a mutable self. Hopefully that works. Uh, oops. Oh, right. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I thought this much. Yeah, but I could just do it here. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, let's try that again. Uh, yeah, okay, so there's a result here. It's just... Um... Well, it did clear things, all right. Um, maybe a bit much. Yeah, 
<laughs> uh, of course it does. Uh, let's see, what does it return? Just res I'm going to resolve, yeah. That's strange though. It clears everything, but it doesn't redraw this stuff. Did it log an error maybe? Uh, interesting. They didn't log any errors, which seemed to indicate that everything went fine. Well, it did manage to clear the screen though, so that's something, but it didn't, <laughs> that didn't do what I wanted either. Ah, that's just annoying. And I'm not really certain there wasn't much documentation on this. Uh, does it maybe say anything in the GitHub, for example? Um, let's see. Documentation. Yeah, this is this is fine, but uh This isn't helping me much either, to be quite frank. Yeah. <laughs> this, um... <laughs> hmm. Interesting, this doesn't implement draw. Huh. Interesting. So it does support clearing, but then it kind of ruins the... Oh, 
it's so strange. Why does it not draw anything if you clear it? That seems weird too, to be honest. And uh, let's see if we go forwards a bit. Uh, let's just do. That's just a trait, which is what I was looking at. It's, it's a feature. All right, that's not that source, this one. How does it implement clear? Execute self buffer clear, clear, clear type all. Yes, it does exactly what I wanted to do. It's a feature called Ultimate Screen. I wonder if it's for doing more or less what you intend to do. Cross term. Alternate. A command that switches to alternate screen. Execute, standard out. Okay, this sounds, well, all the wording looks like what I want. Interesting. So just alternate screen. Okay. Sure, let's just try this. See what this does. <laughs> Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Not this one, this one. Uh, where'd you go? Here we go. Uh, yeah, let's just put this in. Oh, no, that's what we want. Let's put this in here. And we'll do this. this copy pasting like a hero the standard out is that it in Let's just see what happens. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to assume that this that's the... Yeah, it says right here. No supports right for some reason? Why does it import right? No. Does it... Okay, let's just... Um, Use stdv.io standard out. Thanks for the tip, uh, hitchhikers. We'll see if this works. Just going by the names of everything, it kind of looks like what I want, so let's be hopeful. Ah, oh, man. Okay, so everything worked as it should, apart from the fact that it didn't work.
Well, I could maybe read a bit more up on this alternate screen business. Commands, commands must be executed, queued for execution, otherwise they do nothing. Use leave alternate screen command to leave the entered alternate screen. Maybe I should in here set the standard out That's the one I want, isn't it? Yes. To standard out. The trait is not implemented for its standard process STDIO. I need the right frame. I just uh, copy this. Let's see, you seem to be a bit of a they're missing use right trait or something. Okay. So I'm feeling that, um, let's see. Okay. Okay, let's just see quite quick, uh, really quickly. this one that I'm using. Executes one or more commands. So something to write to. Oh, 
implemented for process standard IR. Okay. look over the command API. So uh, terminal alternate screen. Is that like a using the alternate screen in a bash script? Using this truncap file, one on various systems. I think I was wrong as it seems to be about writing to another output instead of instead of standard output. Yeah, it looks like Vim is actually doing this already. Um, to be honest, from what I can read on the internet here. alternate screen buffer which is the same size as the display area of the window when activated the current screen is saved and replaced with the alternate screen yeah okay saving the uh, blah, blah, blah. yes yeah, so it looks like vim is doing this already so I don't think I have to worry about it, but
Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what? Um, I'm just going to leave it that for now. I've basically spent the last hour just trying to figure out how to solve this. And, um, yeah. This is not the most interesting part of a, of a stream. <laughs> Me just, just trying to figure out how something works. So um, I think I'm just going to end it there for tonight. It's past 12 in my time zone anyways. I should probably get to bed. I do have work in the morning. So, yeah. Um, well, thanks to those of you who came watched live. It's fun to have something someone watching. And... Um, Hope to see you in, uh, next time. Bye-bye.